Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our first digital MFSI conference. Um, our theme is making order out of chaos, and we really look forward to, to seeing you. We can go to the next slide. So this is just the program for the day, and we're going to do our welcome and opening. Then we have our speaker, Dr. Shirley Zinn, who will pre be presenting to, to you guys. Then we will play, play a fun game, Spot the Difference, and there will be a 500 Rand cycle of voucher that can be um, won. Then we will have a question and answer session, and we will do our thank yous and our closure. So this year, we have a number of sponsors supporting the association once again, specifically with regards to our digital contact sessions. Our sponsors this year um, are Acfax, Alt, Shuacard, Bidme, Experian, Newpay, Delta, Micamax, TransUnion, Universal, and Shure Systems. We really want to thank our sponsors for supporting the MFSA. Uh, without you, this would not have been possible. background these are our sponsors and we really want to thank them for supporting the association in this session we will have two sponsorship videos where we will show you exactly who our sponsors are um, it's great seeing everyone attending in groups attending um, in their offices I can actually see one guy is walking around and he's got his camera on and you know they are attending these sessions we really want to welcome you and say thank you for taking the time and attending these sessions this year, we're turning 25, we, we had our celebration, and our theme is Accelerate, Adapt, Challenge, and Collaborate. Um, I think this is a very applicable theme for the association. If we can go to the next slide. Um, we want to adapt to the COVID-19 and, and the way that we do business. I think that's the reason why we are hosting this session today. There's a new way of working, something to get used to. And we want to encourage our members to accelerate. Accelerate in your business, accelerate in everything that you do. We want to see growth in the microfinance industry and we want you to keep, um, keep moving forward. Now, it has been tough in the, in the past couple of months. The people are struggling, the consumers are struggling, businesses are struggling. But we want to encourage you to make order out of the chaos that we are finding ourselves in. 
In a Gaussian accelerating compound, each point in front of you is bigger than anything that ever happened. I learned that the moment you want to slow down is the moment you should accelerate. And this is what we're also seeing from our members, is um, sometimes they are finding it hard in business. It's not the time to slow down now. We have to keep moving forward and we have to keep on growing. I want to introduce our speaker today. It's Dr. Shirley Zinn. As you can see, this is her education and I'm going to give you some background. Dr. Shirley Zinn is the former group head of human resources at Woolworths Holding Limited. Prior to this, she was the head of human resources of Standard Bank South Africa and deputy global head of human resources for the Standard Bank. She also registered her own company, Shirley Zinn Consulting, that provides consulting and advisory services in HR transformation, leadership and education. She is a coach and a mentor to several, several women across multiple industries. She has pre presented at numerous national and international conferences as a keynote speaker. And she has also completed a ninth to Ocean Half Marathon in March 2018. And she is preparing for a tenth, um, for a tenth event. We want to welcome Dr. Zinn. And this is also all of the awards that she has um, received. And we want to, we look forward to your presentation and to guiding us in the industry and how we should manage this new normal. Thank you, Dr. Zinn. Thank you so much, uh, Leonie, for um, the invitation and to MFSA for having me. Um, I do remember, I want to uh, send a special shout out to, uh, to Henny as well. Um, I had the special privilege of serving with uh, Henny Pereira on the Bank Seater board way back in the day. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's just such an honor to, to be here this morning. Um, uh, so the, the topic for today is, is, is a very, very interesting one. And I think that everybody around the world in some way, shape or form are trying to make order from chaos. And I think particularly in this industry, uh, it, is, it is so important that we just calm ourselves down enough. And it's wonderful that we can take an hour out of our day like this to be able to just reflect and pause and, 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 and share with our peers um, how we might um, move forward more effectively. So I don't need to tell you that small businesses and large businesses across the world have faced the toughest year yet, from curfews to social distancing to endless months of uncertainty. You plan this way, you plan that way, and things move in ways that you, you cannot anticipate. Um, we have had lockdown for almost a year to the day now, and I think the word for 2020 is chaos. Um, it is a, a one in a hundred year event. Um, none of us would have imagined that something like this could have happened in our lifetime. Um, and we've been living with this uncertainty, fear and anxiety for a prolonged period of time. We have seen what this has done to businesses and we have seen what it has done to people, especially those who have become ill themselves or have lost um, and are grieving um, for loved ones and colleagues that they, that they might have lost at this particular point in time. Um, not only that, social distancing is just inherently something that human beings will have difficulty doing because we need that engagement with um, our fellow human beings. And that is why a philosophy of humanization is very important and the human touch through all of this is very important. And so I would have just loved to have been there with you um, and to be able to see you and, and really talk to you. But this is the way the more you know, innovative, high-tech way that we have to go given our current challenges that we face. And yes, there is the fear and anxiety of a third wave, which is firmly by, uh, you know, looking like it's, it, it, it's coming. Um, and of course, our vaccine challenges, uh, we all know, so I'm not going to go into that. We just hope that we, we will get there at some point very, very soon. In the meantime, we've got hybrids of people working from home, people working, going to the office for a few days a week. Um, and what we have found also that a lot of our people have battled with mental wellness uh, issues. I think it's high up on the agenda of many boards. I'm serving as a non-executive director on a number of boards. And for the very first time, I think um, that, uh, you know, our leadership is now understanding that there needs to be more empathy, that there needs to be more compassion, and that people have to be at the center of what we are doing. Otherwise, um, we are going to not be sustainable into the future. So financial difficulty is a big thing, especially for people who've been battling um, even before COVID came and um, never mind the social challenges and continuously deeping, uh, deepening inequalities. 
uh, gender-based violence and all of the challenges that we have I've seen um, um, over the last 12 months. So the question really to us is how, to, how do we grow and show leader, leadership in these tough times? What kind of leaders will um, be able to sustain the organizations through these difficult times? I um, mean, I will share some of my thoughts with you on that as well. Um, how do we manage our own businesses through this pan pandemic? How do we personally just get through it ourselves? Because this is personal. It's not something that's out there any longer. And of course, um, some wise person said, chaos is inherently uncertain, messy and disorderly. And as humans, we like to cre create order because we crave certainty, clarity and freedom. And so just a quick glance at the uh, microfinance industry. Um, it was not defined as an essential service during this time, the, during this period of COVID, and therefore wasn't able to operate uh, during the lockdown, like taxes, et cetera, were able to do. Um, and then it's mostly small businesses versus banks that could continue to trade during this time. And the bigger players we can see are becoming more um, um, innovative and offering online services and other offerings which are which are quite you know difficult for us in this uh, an environment to do many of our customers have also stopped to lend due to shaky income levels and fraud we know is on the uptick people running with other people's money we don't have to talk about the challenges of corruption and and and, and unethical behavior um in 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 the space um, and not only not only in this industry, way beyond that. Then, of course, um, I was just watching as your history was uh, scrolling um, in the, in the up, uh, just before we opened the session, and we see that the re regulatory bodies are also requiring more of us, and this is costing us even more to do business, constantly under scrutiny. Um, and then, of course, data and technology and innovation and processes that offer for purpose. Um, and secure um, example in our proper requirements. These are all creating a lot of complexity in our in our business and creating a lot of challenge for us. So I thought today I will I'll share also just a little bit of my own personal and professional journey, just by way of 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 of, of giving you some sense of how life can toss us curveballs, how challenges do come our way, how trauma and tragedy do seek to diminish us, but we have the resilience to rise above that. We have the most amazing magic magic, and talent um, within ourselves and huge potential to overcome um, 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 massive difficulty as human beings. And so today I want to ask you to dig really deep into yourself as you reflect on the challenges that we are facing. So just a little bit about me. Um, I grew up here um, in the Cape Flats. I was born, I uh, will say, in the, in, let's just say it, in 1961 and be done with that. Um, and uh, I grew up in very, very difficult socioeconomic uh, conditions, which pretty much still prevail here in the Cape Flats in Cape Town and uh, prevails in any other, uh, you know, township that we're familiar with. Socioeconomic challenges, unemployment, um, uh, domestic violence, very little hope and a lot of despair and, and, and poverty is on the rise in these places, as we know. And I had parents, and you might think of significant others that you had around you also, that said, you know, surely you must have a goal in life. You must set yourself some targets that you will achieve so that you can actually get yourself out of this and not be sucked up into it. It's very easy to get sucked into the despair of, of living in places like this and getting caught up in the drugs and the gangsterism and all of the stuff that goes on in places like this. And I said to my father, what is it that you really would like me to achieve? And he said to me, please, will you just get your matric? So um, I want to say to you that um, Leonie just flashed up um, the, the, the qualifications I have. Um, and that was a huge journey for me because that that message that day enormously resonated with me, I understood that education was going to be part of my personal liberation and that I had to continue to invest in it. Now, I'm not saying to you all that you must continue to amass tons of degrees. What I am saying is that we need to stay on top of our game. We need to, you know, engage with the daily news. We need to engage with our peers to, to kind of co-create solutions for our future. We need to try and stay on top of our game. And that is what learning really, the kind of learning that I'm proposing 
to you. So this was my father, and I don't have to tell you about um, you know how many matriculants actually get on, uh, how, well, how many students get on at grade one and finish at grade twelve. But um, when I got um, 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 to understanding what it is that he wanted me to achieve, that became a big a big goal for me personally to try and achieve. The flip side of that was my mother who was on about values. And I think our values are so core to who we are. And, and if there's something in this life right now that will be anchors to us, are our values, our values of respect for other people, our values of humility, which is not a, a humility that is a, a weakness, but a humility that says, you know, things are tough, but I need to be able to pick myself up and continue to move forward. If I fail, if I make mistakes, I need, I need to find a way to lift myself and take others with me, um, uh, take them forward. There were other things that you talked about, you know, hard doing, you know, nothing comes without hard work. And you have to do everything that you do, do it to the best of your ability. None of us here are perfect. We are human beings. Um, and I know we beat ourselves up a lot when we make mistakes or things go wrong. So those, those are the very important sort of values that we were taught at a very, very early age. And I'm sure many of you can resonate with that. Perhaps one last thing I want to throw into that mix is that um, an act of kindness an act of gratitude every day is very, very important. I think this world has actually forgotten um, how to just how to just be kind and to care more about each other. And I know I sat in the in the banks. I spent a lot of um, I was HR director at Ned Bank and at Standard Bank and at SARS. Spent a lot of time in financial services. And when you talk to people about care, um, it's like you know, it's kind of what's the next item on the agenda, please. So um, it's it's something that we really need to do a lot more of. And this is one of the things I believe COVID has uh, instilled in us is the ability to care more and be kinder to people. And so, of course, I um, I went to matric. Um, I got to matric. It was a daunting and exciting time um, for me. And two teachers sat me down. Now, this is a five minute conversation um, that they had with me. And they said to me, you know, Shirley, you're not the brightest pea in the pod here. We know you we were you working hard, but you you're not you're like you know you're not shattering the lights out with A's and A pluses. Um, and I sat there as kind of so so what now you know? And they said to me something very profound that if you forget everything today that I tell you, please remember this. They said to me, you have the potential to do so much more than you are doing, or that you think you can do. And I was kind of wow. And I want to say to each one of you, we are. We are gifted with the most amazing potential. Often that potential is not unleashed because of fear of, of what people might think, of what could go wrong, of, you know, of, of, um, of just general, I, I can't put myself out there in that way. I want to say to you that each one of you have the most amazing potential within yourselves. And whatever that talent is, please do not postpone or defer or put it off try to live that potential that you have within yourself. And so, of course, I said to the teachers, what would you like me to do? And they said, go home and go and talk to your parents about university. And so, um, so this is how, uh, there are lots of stories within the stories. Um, the book is called Swimming Upstream, for those of you who'd like to read it. But um, this is where I, I began the journey of studying, of, 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 of trying to progress in my career, um, obviously, I studied all my degrees are in education, but I found myself um, doing HR, uh, human resource management, because I wanted to apply those learnings. And, um, and so this is, you know, a point where values and vision became very important to me. It also became important, and this is a, another message I want to leave, to you, leave with you today. Surround yourselves deliberately with people who will uplift and inspire you. We spend a lot of time with people who you know, are drifting, who, are, who, can, who can be toxic, who can take us down. And I want to say those people, sometimes you, you, you have to figure out how to work with them. But you can choose two or three people that you spend your time with that will uplift and inspire you, especially through these very difficult times. Never let anyone make you feel unworthy or inadequate. You are enough. And, and let's believe in ourselves a little bit more. Um, see these challenges as an opportunity to learn and continue to learn. 
And um, I want to say to you that I had the opportunity to study. I studied at Harvard University. Um, I studied locally. I worked in the most amazing organizations um, over my lifetime. I continue to do so in a non-executive director position, uh, several of those right now. But I want to say that I had a devastation in my life. We, in 2003, we were living up in, in Johannesburg. Um, we used to come back to Cape Town for family events. And um, I gave birth to our only child um, in the middle of my doctorate while I was at Harvard in the US. We came back with him. Um, and in 2003, we were driving back um, to Johannesburg. We were just on the end to year pass at uh, Cape Town International Airport. And somebody bumped us from behind and we lost our only child in that car accident. I am very fortunate to be alive, as is my husband. So I want to say to you, it was devastating. Uh, that has to be the most devastating thing that can happen in a person's lives, life where you lose a child, where you, you, you lose a loved one. And I think all of us have been in those places even more so now. But I want to say I woke up there and I had to pull myself up from my bootstraps. I had to go and get help, go and do the healing and do it purposefully. A lot of us do not have the courage to put up our hand and say we need help, especially when we feel that, you know, our lives have just, um, um, you know, just been just destroyed in, in, in such a horrific way. I want to say to you, reach out and get help if you need help. This is what we had to do. And when I finally had dug deep and told myself, I will have to find a way to lift myself up through this with the loving care of people around me. Um, I realized that living our lives with purpose and meaning every single day is what matters in this life. Live your life with meaning. Know why you get up in the morning. Do what it is that you love and do it to the best of your ability. And of course, having gratitude for the little things in life. Sometimes we only see the doomsday things, but those are the things I held on to and those are the things that anchors me. And of course, there was a very great leader in our lifetime that said it always seems impossible until it's done. And I want to plead with you today to try and, and overcome through these difficult times. Try to see, try to find it within yourself and try to join hands with other people so that we can all move each other um, forward. This really is my, my wish for you. So yes, adversity, crisis, trauma and, and devastation will hit us. We live in what somebody called the VUCA world. So VUCA being V for volatile, U for uncertain, C for complexity. Somebody's added another C in for COVID and for, for A for ambiguous. We have been through a lot of personal and professional vulnerability. We have suffered loss and grief. Many of us sitting here today are worried about whether we're going to be here in the next few months still. And I think we, we need to deeply reflect on that and we need to say, what is it? What is it that I can still do to sustain myself physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually? We have to find those anchors in order to take ourselves um, um, forward and, our co and improve our coping mechanisms over prolonged period of, 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 of complexity that we face. So it starts within ourselves and with those um, around us. And um, it is so important to build relationships. And that is why peer group meetings like these are so important in order to su support um, each other and build a community um, using your peers as a professional um, network that can help you through this. And so um, I just want to talk one, uh, uh, one more, one or two more points about growing your own grit. Okay, grit refers to perseverance and passion despite uh, long-term challenges. Be willing to know that it's not going to be an easy road, but we've got to keep on moving forward. Do not beat yourself up too much when you have disappointments. Yes, we must be angry. Yes, we must be. Uh, we, we we must. Um, you know, be disappointed, but we must get up as soon as we possibly can and move in the right direction um, because that is, 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 is going to be um, a feature in our lives, this difficulty for some time still to come. Unfortunately, it's not going to go away. Um, and I know that, you know, we have the most motivation to finish well and follow through. And I believe that the future is human. This, you know, normality as we knew it before is, 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 is going to be elusive. This is a new reality that is emerging and we need leaders like yourself, leaders that are credible, that are ethical, that are adaptive, that are collaborative and can, can sustain themselves through these difficult times. 
purpose-led and values-based leadership is what we need today. Um, and this is what is going to make the difference between us um, falling over or moving forward. Leading with trust and compassion and care with our people, being present in the current crisis and turning confusion and chaos into clarity for people. This is what we need to do for ourselves, for our families, for our communities and for our businesses. And so as I close, um, I often subscribe when I do some mentorship programs to the GROW model is G-R-O-W. You can go and Google it if you, if you want to just find it a bit more. But I'm going to give it to you very loosely now. So the GROW model looks, asks us to look at the following. The G means what are our goals? What are our targets? What are our aspirations? What are the short-term things that we have to do every day in order to achieve our longer-term goals? Everything we do every single day matters towards our longer term goals. So let's use our time wisely. Let's not wait for something to happen. Let's try to influence and shape our realities. So the G is for what are our goals? The R is for what are our realities? What is going on around us? How much of it can we manage? How much of the noise can we calm down? How much, how, how much can we anchor ourselves in what we believe we can actually achieve over the short and long term? And the O means, what are our options? What are the choices that we have in our current scenario? Um, and what um, is the W? The W is what are we willing to do and what are we willing to not do? Um, and, and, and if we use this model in everything we do, it helps to just frame um, our day to day um, over the long term to give us a set of things that we, you know, when we go and reflect at night, um, in the quiet of our own souls and we say to ourselves, what have I actually achieved here today? What can I still do that is better, that I can improve on? Um, what was a horrendous error that I made? What do I need to fix? That reflection, I want you to also give yourself five, ten minutes every day to have these kinds of reflections. And so how can we bring our work, our souls, our family, our community um, uh, closer together? so that we live more harmonious kinds of lives during this time. And I want to say to you that um, at a time like this, we need to find the resilience to emerge, not diminished, but even more stronger. So my wish for you today is that you keep on moving forward, that you find the strength, that you find the motivation, that you find the inspiration to continue to live with purpose and that your business and overall personal well-being will continue to be sustained through these difficult times. I thank you. Great, thank you so much, Dr. Zinn. We really appreciate those, um, those words. I think I can read in the chat boxes, uh, wow, a message I needed today. Thank you very much for this powerful encouragement. Um, we really do appreciate it. Sometimes we are so focused on, on working that we forget the other stuff like, like leadership. Um, let's just give our members and our, our attendees just a, a mental break for about five minutes and let's play a small game. It's called Spot the Difference. So I think everyone knows how it works. You're going to, to show you two images and you have to spot how many differences you see in the image. So the first person that um, actually says the, the number of differences that they see will be a winner of a take a lot voucher. So yes, let's go to the images and see if you can spot the differences. Okay, so you must tell me how many differences there are. So I can see there's an Akbas twice, top right corner, the Baza logo. But in total, if you look at the, um, the bottom and the, the top picture, how many differences did you see? Is it five? Is it 18? Is it 20? Come, 
I'm going to give you guys another two minutes. Great, and we have a winner. The winner is Davina Maybert because the answer is seven differences. So well done, Davina. We will send you your take a lot voucher. Um, yes, and thank you for spotting it so so quickly. Great. Now, if we go back into Dr. Zim's um, presentation, um, I just want to touch on a couple of matters. Um, I think acts of kindness is very important in the society that we live in now. And sometimes we get so sterile, we just focus on work that we forget to be kind. Um, kind. And I agree, um, we are gifted and we have potential and we should unleash that, that gift and that potential and we shouldn't be afraid to, to be leaders in our society. Also, surrounding yourself with people that is um, inspiring, that inspires you and that also has a positive influence on you has a big um, influence on, on your daily, um, on how you feel at work, on, on how you treat everyone, on how you lead and have gratitude for the little things in life. So I think everything that Dr. Zinn stated um, is really applicable to being a leader in the industry. Um, I think we are all very familiar with the theme grit, growing your own grit and um, perseverance, you know, pushing through, if we look at our industry, the grit that we, that we have to show, um, you know, with all of the um, difficulties that's currently in our industry. And then we must also focus on purpose-led leadership. I really like that, that there must be a purpose in, in your leadership and being present. So um, is there specifically any questions that you would um, like to ask um, Dr. Zinn? So what you can do is you can just type your questions um, in the chat box option on the right hand side and um, we can ask Dr. Zinn some questions. If there's nothing in specific, um, Dr. Zinn, I would actually like to ask you to elaborate a little bit on your book. Um, and uh, the, the learnings within your book. Thank you. Um, thanks very much, uh, Leonie, for that. So um, my book is called Swimming Upstream, and it's, a, it's just a story of my personal and professional journey, um, which was a very difficult thing for me to actually write because of, um, you know, the, the, the challenges that one faces in life. And I hit, uh, hit quite a lot of roadblocks um, in terms of, of trying to write this. But I thought that if I, if I can write this and inspire even just one person, a young person or somebody who's, who's, who's disadvantaged and somebody who's battling, um, it would have been worth um, the right. And I think for me, in summary, um, um, as I was saying, that life, life has tossed me plenty of opportunities to grow and to thrive. I've had, you know, um, if, if you think about what you can do as a, 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 a leader, and I'm not talking about a leader now that with, with titles and all of that, we lead right from where we are. And if you take one young person under your wing, um, you can inspire them. These teachers, they had a conversation with me for five minutes that turned my life and the trajectory of my life around forever because I was just going to actually finish my trick and go and find a job. I was ne never ever going to think about university. And my, my point is that life has tossed me um, some really good opportunities, but it has also tossed me some of the most devastating um, 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 tragedy um, that, that I could ever have imagined. And I, it, it had made me stop in my tracks and really think about what part in life, what journey is it that I, that, is it that I need to be taking? How do I overcome this, um, this, this, this challenge of, of, of despair that I, deep despair that I felt. And I think that many people, especially now, you know, we, we, we engage with people and we say to people, you know, how are you? You know, we, but we're not really asking or listening for how are people really feeling today? And how can we help them um, to improve? How can you see, how can you put a, a ray of light back in somebody's soul and plant a plant a seed of hope that says 
yes, it is a difficult time, but we can move forward. And so in writing this book, these were all the, the messages that I was trying to get across. I was saying to you also that I was it, through the book, you know, and having lost our only child, I, I know that in times like this, it's such a difficult time. And, in, and now we have a work from home arrangements. We have children who have been out of school for a long time and they do learn from home. And it creates a huge amount of complexity, especially if we don't have the setup that is conducive to this. Um, but I still want to encourage you that our children are a gift, um, love them and, and you know, um, make sure that you can actually um, take them through this difficult time as well. I think that a lot of us have suffered a lot of, you know, of grief, of anxiety, of stress. A lot of us, though, you know, we still live in a, in a world that stigmatizes things like um, mental wellness um, and having served on a whole lot of um, different medical aids, I can tell you now um, as a trustee that a lot of people are battling with their health. A lot, we need to take care of our health. If you don't have your health, you actually really cannot do much. Even if you have lots of money, you still can't live a, a, a fulfilling life. And so uh, I want to say to you right now that we all have to make a special effort to take care of our health. And that is why, you know, we work very hard. You've got to take the time out. And as you were saying, Leonie, I'm still trying to, to run. I'm trying to do a little bit of exercise every day because it helps you to stay mentally sharp and it helps you to stay emotionally focused as well. And, and helps you to remain optimistic, you know, that um, you, you can still, um, you, you still, you haven't, you know, um, um, succumbed in any way to the illnesses that we have around us. And, um, and, and that we have courage, you know, I wanted to, in the book, bring across the, the concept of, um, you know, that we have to be brave and bold in this current scenario. And it's so easy, so easy to give up to despair and challenge. So I think that um, I'm, I, can, I can carry on, but I want to say to you that we need to remain, we need to treat each other with care and diligence. We need to remain resilient. We need to see the beauty in other people. We need to understand the value of values and, the, and take care of ourselves. Self-care is important. And I want to say to you as I finish up, um, never ever give up it will be it will be um easy to give up for many of us because we think we've just done it we we finish with there's nothing more that we can do but i want to say to you find yourself a sponsor find yourself a trusted advisor find yourself a coach or a mentor it doesn't have to be all formal even if it's just somebody that you can trust that you can speak to that can move you forward our happiness at this point in time, happiness indexes are not very really high and it affects the way we are productive and think about our future. And um, I want to say that we need to uh, leave a legacy uh, for our children, even though it's a very difficult time for all of us right now. I want to encourage you that through discipline, determination and dedication and diligence, we can do it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, we have three questions here. The first one is, um, what is your biggest personal learning from COVID? What was your biggest personal learning from COVID? So that's a very, very good question. I think each one of us will have a different um, a sort of personal perspective on it. But I think what I've learned is um, um, through COVID that we have the, um, the, the amazing capacity to work through massive difficulty in our lives whether it be personal lives or whether it be professional lives. We have never been presented with anything at this scale before. Um, all of us have thought that COVID, you know, when we thought about it last year, this time we thought it's another country, millions of miles away, it will never impact on us. And I think almost each one of us has, 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 has lost somebody um, um, very close to us over the, over the last months. This is real. This is going to, uh, you know, we don't know where this is going to actually end or whether it will ever end. And we, uh, um, I've come to understand now that I have to be um, adaptive, I have to be innovative, I've got to remain curious, and most of all, I've got to remain optimistic. If I become, if I'm going to become um, self-critical, if I'm going to become um, um, demoralized, which is very easy to become, if I'm going to stay um, um, in, a, in a state of, of chaos and not see 
that little lining, um, in, uh, golden or lining in, in the cloud, um, I'm, I'm going, to, going to give up. And, and I want to encourage all of us to remain optimistic, to remain positive, and to do those little acts of kindness to help to give back somehow, even if it's just to one person a few minutes of your day, it makes a huge difference um, in terms of, uh, you know, um, um, deep fulfillment to ourselves that you've either planted a seed of hope, you've given somebody a new, a new a way to think about what the possibilities for the future might be, you've inspired a young person, um, and, or you've uplifted another peer by, by giving them some tips and tricks that you have learned um, in your time. So I think that COVID has given us a, a lot to feel negative about and to feel sad about and be confused about, but it also give us, given us a new opportunity to engage each other as, 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 as human beings, one to the other, and to support each other and to lift each other up during this time. Thank you so much, Dr. Zinn. Um, your, your book is available on Take A Lot, hey? Yes, thank you, Leonie. The book is available at exclusive books uh, countrywide. It's available also on takealot.com or amazon.com if you'd like to if you'd like to get hold of it. Okay, great. And then the, the, the other question that, that we have is is current youth is the current youth generation feeling the despair of the current circumstances in our country? Yes, that's a very good question, Leonie. I think that um, if you look at what, what COVID has done to unemployment, um, we see that our unemployment numbers have gone up, um, significantly gone up. We have seen, and the reports I always think um, are there, but we know that the situations are much worse. We've seen people that have been, millions of people have been retrenched, two million people at least that we know of, over the last uh, 12 months. Um, that informal businesses have, um, have, have actually lost their ability to operate and their revenue streams have dried up. And we see that the unemployment rate amongst our youth, people between the ages of 18 and 35, is at an all-time high of more than 70%. Okay? Um, and imagine what that does to somebody who wants to start a career, start a professional life, uh, want to have a family, want to buy the first house, the first vehicle, how are people supposed to, to, to cope under these kinds of circumstances? Where are they going to get the finances from to do this? Um, and how do families support each other during times like this? We have also seen another sad statistic appear of young people taking their lives right now because they, they're just battling. Can you imagine your class of, you were part of the class of 2020, you were supposed to matriculate. Last year was a complete chaos um, um, for education um, and, and though many many made it and we saw the results just a few weeks ago where do they go to from here what's the next thing in life and um, I think for our youth they need a lot of support um, um, from, from, from us as, as adults um, we need to be able to, to guide them still give them hope give them a, an opportunity if they have the potential to study further or to find some interim work um, to keep them to keep them optimistic as well, because the uh, the impact on our youth and our young people has been devastating. And um, um, if you just look at that unemployment number and you think about where we are, where we were, let's say when we were averaging around twenty five years old, what kinds of things we were doing versus where our young people are right now and what opportunities are available to them, it's a sadness. Um, and so. We need, to, we need to continue to ensure that we are creating new, the new world of work, that we are um, enabling our, our, our young people to um, um, still be able to put one foot in front of the other during this difficult time. I, I completely agree. Um, we are moving closer to, to the end of, of our session. Um, perhaps um, if there's any more questions, you can also um, email it to me or, um, you know, you can send it to us. But perhaps, Dr. Zinn, um, is there any last thoughts that you want to leave with us, specifically with regards to our leadership in the microfinance industry and um, what they should do in order to, to guide their people through this, um, basically, this new normal and the circumstances that they are finding themselves in? Um, thank you very much, Leonie. So I, I want to say to you and reaffirm 
that the microfinance industry is a critical industry in this in this country. Um, so don't let anybody diminish that for you. Um, it, yes, we've had difficulty. We haven't been able to operate. We haven't been able to generate any profits. People are, you know, there are, there are banks coming into play now. Um, you struggle with uh, NCR and other regulators um, to stay abreast of all the compliance requirements. And we know that fraud is on the uptick. There are players coming in that are, are taking money off of your customers because there's a desperation out there for, for and that people's debts are increasing. Um, but I want to encourage you to say that this industry has been around and you have grown your industry. I was just watching your, again, your clips earlier on, Leonie, about the journey of, of MFSA and how it has grown from where it was to where it is today and how it has overcome all the legal challenges, all the regulatory challenges, and how you have played an advocacy role for people who have run legitimate businesses in this area and that you've created this platform and this, this, this peer group network to support each other. And all I can say is that during a time like this, you need to find ways to, you know, to get, to keep people connected, to keep people collaborating, to, to create a cohesive um, 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 structure for people to feel that they are part of something that they're not out there on their own having to struggle and that we can share tools and, and, and learnings and, and um, with each other uh, and solutions with each other so that we don't all have to go and think about, you know, um, 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 what, how am I going to work my way through this and that we truly create a culture within this organization um, that, that, that we, 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 we are, where we are a peer group that truly cares about the success of every single member in this in this organization, of every single business person, of every single leader um, that is going out there during this difficult times to do what you have to do, and that you that you stay focused on your purpose. Your purpose is to ensure that you are able to help uh, people out there with uh, with with their financial management within this sector, and it makes a difference to people's lives what it is that you are doing. That really is your purpose. So um, stay focused on that and continue to support each other through this difficult time. We know that this peer networking uh, capability and advocacy is one of the most important things right now to help us to collaborate and see each other through. So I want to encourage you to continue to do this and inspire each other. Thank you so much, Dr. Zen. We really do appreciate your time and your inspiring words. Um, yes, I see some questions coming through again, and um, we will try and answer it um, after the session. Um, but thank you so much for, for your time. We really do appreciate it. As Dr. Zen stated, her book is available at Exclusive Books or Amazon or, or Take A Lot. Um, yes, thank you so much. Okay, up next, we will just have a look at the rest of our sponsors.
you very much. Um, um, we are going to post the link in our chat box now. If you can please just take the time to, to fill in the survey. It's a very short survey. It's eight questions. Um, if you can click onto that and, and, and complete it, we would really appreciate it. Um, so now I just posted it in the, in the chat box. Okay. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes just to complete that. Um, then if we go on to the next slide, um, we just want to provide you with an update of what we're doing for the other sessions. Um, so the 30th of April, we have our next session. It, it was the 8th of April, but we actually moved it due to the Easter holidays. And we are going to focus on training and the Protection of Personal Information Act. So I think it's very important for you to also attend that. And as you know, Poppia is getting um, it's in our faces now, and we really have to start focusing on that and be, be compliant. On the 12th of May, we will focus on compliance legislation and regulation. On the 8th of June, on technology. On the 14th of July, um, we will be focusing on consumer centricity. On the 8th of September, on advocacy. What is advocacy and why do we do advocacy? And then again, on the 10th of November, on compliance legislation and regulation. Thank you once again to, to everyone that attended, to all of our sponsors and our service providers. And thank you for taking the time out of your day um, to attend this session. And we look forward to seeing you again in April. Um, if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to contact the MFSA. You must have a great day and remember everything that Dr. Shirley Zinn said. Thank you once again.